Hey, I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackGear.com. Today we're going to break down the all-new HJC ARPA 71 full-face helmet. The ARPA 71 retails from $479 to $699. 479 is going to be a solid color fiberglass shell with the 699 being their super cool full carbon shell. Who is this helmet right for? This helmet was designed for street riders that are looking for the protection and comfort of a full face helmet along with the convenience of a drop down tinted inner screen. This is a great feature. It allows you to go from riding in dark to light conditions with just the simple slide of a switch. What's in the box? This helmet is gonna ship complete with a pin lock, fog-free insert that'll go on the inside of your clear outer shield. It includes the dark smoke tinted drop-down inner screen, as well as a chin curtain which comes installed already in the helmet. Helmet fit. This is an area where we can really help you out. I measure 58 centimeters on the money with an intermediate oval head shape. I've literally owned and ridden in hundreds of helmets spread over many decades at this point. The size chart for this helmet would put me in a medium or a large. They take the, the high end of the medium to the 58 and the low end of the large is at 58. I ordered in both sizes. I wore them both at my desk. I prefer a tighter fitting helmet. That's my preference. It always has been. I know there are riders out there who are kind of sensitive to having a tighter fitting helmet. Most oftentimes, you're going to hear me tell you, always order the one that corresponds with your measurement on the size chart. I think for many riders out there with this helmet, the way it fits, if you find yourself wanting a helmet that is more comfortable right out of the box, right? You're sensitive to a tighter fit. I would say for many riders, let's go up one size to get you that fit. I don't often say this, but I got the fit I prefer from a medium, and then I had the large on and I was able to wear it. It fit perfect. Many people would like it. It was just more comfortable and a little roomier than the medium. I hope that helps you choose the right size for yourself. The ARFA 71 weighs 3.6 pounds in a size medium on our digital shipping scale, which is exactly where I would expect a helmet like this to land. Bluetooth compatibility. If you're riding on the street, odds are you're going to be putting a Bluetooth device on this helmet. With this one, HJC and Cena have partnered up and they have a direct fit system. There are two models to choose from, the 50B and the 21B. The 50 being the higher end of the two, both of them are direct integration. We'll show you as we get it further into this video, but these plates slide right off, the unit slides right on, the battery pack is held back here, pockets for the speakers, pocket for the microphone, direct integration. If you want to use a universal model, there are models out there that offer the two-sided tape adhesion, right? You'd be able to put that somewhere in this area here. If you needed to use the clamp, you're going to have to mount it further back on the helmet, but it still would be possible. Without question, the cleanest way is going to be the HJC Cena partnership. My intention is to do a follow-up video to this sometime during the month of February, where I install one of those in these helmets to give you an idea of what it takes to get the install done and how clean the end result is. Ventilation. Ventilation on this helmet is managed through an intake vent. On the chin bar, i got to tell you the quality of the vents, the action on the vents is top shelf. They did a great job with that. There's a large intake vent up here on the crown of the helmet. You've got extractors and exhaust back here on the back of the helmet. With any helmet that is full face that offers a drop down inner screen, there's trade-offs with everything. You pick up the, the convenience of having that drop-down tinted inner screen, but one thing you lose, or the manufacturer loses, is the ability to put direct vents right here in that brow area, which is a great place to bring air into the helmet. So the level of ventilation you're going to get this get from this helmet is going to be good. It's going to make you more comfortable when you're riding for sure, 
but don't expect this to move air like an Arai Corsair V or a Shoei X15 or something because they're just a little limited where you're able to put the vents, but that is going to be the case with any helmet that offers a drop-down inner screen. Shell construction. This uses their premium fiberglass shell construction. It's available in four different shell sizes. The extra small and the small share one shell. The medium has its own. The large has its own. The extra large and the 2X are going to shell share the fourth and final shell. Safety standards. This was developed and submitted to the DOT testing here in the U.S., which is what you'll find with most street-only helmets. Level of noise I expect from this helmet. They did some things to mitigate that. You can see the shaping here on the shield, the curvature of that. That is meant to allow the air to roll off the edge and be a little quieter, right? The vents that you have on the outside and the amount of ventilation that it has, I would say the noise production of this, I expect it to be very reasonable. One thing it does very well is the contour of the cheek pads and then the chin curtain that it includes. When you have this on, it really seals up in that area. This, is, this area is a huge producer of noise. If it's really open and loose down here and it's not sealing tight against your jawline, it's simply going to make more noise. Very important to understand that. That said, this is not one of the models that I would ride in. I'm not really doing any street riding at this point. Everything we're doing is racing and on the racetrack. But once again, I've reviewed hundreds of helmets and ridden in hundreds of helmets over the years. So I would say my opinion is still pretty valid. Glasses compatibility. HJC did a great job. They slide in, they ride in the channel. I think people that are wearing glasses, most of them are going to be very easily compatible. Okay, the shield. This is a locking shield. They have a little spring-loaded tab right here to release, push in, lift up. You can do that all with just one hand. Changing the shield on this helmet, this is one of the easier ones I think that I've ever handled. Pull forward to remove on that trigger right there and it releases. Repeat on the other side. If you look, there is a triangular shape where it engages with the shield ratchet system. This is, every other one I've ever seen is round. This is all new from our friends at HJC, kind of cool, and very easy to use. To reinstall it, you simply engage that. You want to make sure this tab up here in the front too, there's a little tab there. You want to make sure that engages in the channel like so. Anytime you put the shield back on, you're always going to try and get it in that upright position. You're going to hear it click. I like to engage the lock a couple of times up and down to make sure that you've got it before you go out and ride in it. Very simple. It's an all new ratchet mechanism for this model. The interior of the helmet is fully removable. That's something that if you're going to do the Bluetooth installation, you're going to have to do while we're on that point to remove these covers on the side. You simply push in on this little tab right here and then push down on the shield. There is one other feature this helmet includes and it's in reference to the drop down inner screen and we're going to show you this while we have the outer shield off the helmet. When you have the side plate removed on the left side of the helmet, it is going to expose this switch right here. The default position is all the way down. Let's go ahead and raise the shield up. If you slide it up one and now bring this down, it is going to move that shield about five millimeters roughly away from your face and allow it to come down just a little bit further. All the way up. And you can kind of see that it comes down even further and you can watch it kind of push itself out. See that? That is to get you more room. If you find this shield is too close to your face, remove that side plate, adjust the switch, find the setting that's going to make the most sense for you, and you're good to go. That's the first time 
that I can re recall seeing adjustability of that nature offered in a helmet. So these side plates, these would be removed if you're going to install the HJC Cena communicator. Moving on to the interior. This does have emergency release cheek pads in it, fully removable liner. We'll start by removing the chin curtain, grab it here in the corner, and kind of pull out. Full disclosure, reinstalling this takes a little bit of effort. To remove the cheek pads, you're going to have three snaps, one in the front. You want to slide your fingers in between the EPS and the backing of the cheek pad. Put some pressure to release, one at the top and then one at the back of the cheek pad. Once you have those snaps undone, grab it right here and pull out. Repeat the process for the other pad. Out it comes. For your top pad, we have two snaps at the back. You come to the front here in the brow of the helmet. To release this, you need to lift up a little bit on that tab. Just kind of get your fingernail behind it. Very light pressure. Realistically, most people probably would never pull this stuff out. Let's take a quick look at the quality of the interior. I, can't say this enough. I think I do this every time I review an HJC helmet. Their quality has come so unbelievably far since the period that I've been in this industry. They've totally redefined themselves. Here is the top pad. Looks great. Positive engagement from all the snaps. The materials are comfortable. Look to be high quality. Here's that contoured cheek pad. You can see the engineering they have there in that quick release. There are optional pad options. We have those on the website to adjust the fit of the helmet. If you need any help with that, you can always reach out to our sales support team. They'll help you. The channels that are built into this helmet to run the speaker wire, the pockets that are in there to accept the communicator, the pocket that's up here in the front of the chin bar. Can you see that? To accept the microphone. This is the cover that comes in if you're not going to use, they are directional, if you're not going to use a Bluetooth device. They have really done an excellent job with that. If you use the direct fit models, they're going to look great. Even a universal, you're going to be able to get a really good, clean installation out of that. And for a street helmet, I mean, every street rider you see out there at this point is using some type of Bluetooth device, either to communicate with the other riders in the group or phone calls, music. I know I'm a snowmobiler. All of my snowmobile helmets at this point have different Bluetooth devices on them. I'm not taking calls or really talking to anybody. I like to listen to music when I'm riding and this helmet makes that install super easy. Like I said, we're going to have a follow-up video sometime this month showing you what it takes to get it done and what the end result itself looks like. You can see the channeling here while, we're, while we got you in the EPS for the ventilation. Lots of holes in there, lots of channeling. They're doing the best they can to move a good amount of air through a helmet that offers a drop-down inner screen. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section of this video. I answer all that stuff myself and always here to help you choose the right helmet for your next ride.